Hi guys, I'm Darren and in this video we're going to make this turn on and off and start recording using this. So some of you may have heard the term PinIO banded about in iNav forums, that sort of thing. Now what PinIO allows you to do is control a device using a small electronic impulse. So what it actually does is mimic the button on the front of the camera. So for example, if I press this button it will turn the camera on. If I long press it, it will start recording. What we can actually do is using the pin IO is actually turn power on or off, effectively making or breaking the contact on this switch for the same amount of times to perform the same operations. So for example, that will allow us to turn the camera on when we're already flying and then start recording. So it is quite a useful little tool. This is also a fairly simple thing to set up. The problem is that not all flight controllers will support pin IO or when they do it may be being used for something else. So what we'll do in a sec is take a look at that. But first I'm just going to show the basic wiring of how to set this up. So this is the page for the Cadex Peanut which is the camera I'm using that's why I'm showing this diagram. And what we're interested in is this wiring. We have our little unit that just clips on the back with a magnet and that has a few wires sticking out. And in this diagram here, you can see we have a uh, power wire, which depending on the setup, you can have 5 volt or VBAT, depending if you're using a, a step down in this case. Of course, if you're using a different camera, make sure to check out their requirements. But in general, we have power, which will have a voltage limit for the camera, a ground, and we have this control pin. So this is where it gets a bit confusing because the third wire is actually saying to wire it up to a TX. So people may think that this is using a UART for control, but that's not the case at all. It is using pin IO. And they show a TX because a lot of these companies only really think about beta flight where they can resource remap. With iNav that's not the case and actually it's a little bit easier with iNav so long as there's a target for the flight controller with a pin IO option on it. So we have our three wires which is power, ground and we'll call it control which is the pin IO wire. So now what do we need on our flight controllers? The first thing I'm going to do is show you a flight controller which has pin IO already on it where you can just hook up a wire and use it. That's this Maytech F405 VTOL flight controller, which is using the target F405 TE underscore SD. So any other flight controllers using that target will have pin IO on it. Whether or not it's broken out onto a separate pin, you will need to check on the actual flight controller. So let's scroll down and look at the pin layout. And what you'll see here is this pin IO1. Now this is where we can wire up our little yellow wire to. So what we'll do is have a five volt and ground and our little yellow wire, and that is our peanut wired up. So that on this flight controller would be really, really simple. Now with other flight controllers, they will have pin IO, but they will be used for specific features. This flight controller actually has user one and user two pin IO. Now, user one and user two are the modes that you turn on and off in the modes page to actually do the stuff with pin IO. And if we read this, user one is operating this uh, pad here, whereas user two is used to switch between the cameras. On other flight controllers, you may find that user one is used to switch the power on and off for the VTX. So as I say, make sure you check on the flight controller. You may have seen the flight controller I'm going to be showing you on, which is this F405 wing. If I show you the F405 wing page, there is no mention of pin IO on this at all. There's no pins, there's not even a camera switcher or VTX switch on this at all. There is no pin IO. But if we pop into the GitHub, go to the iNav uh, firmware GitHub, and we'll look in documents and boards, We'll go down to Matek F405 wing and we can see that there is actually a specific target which adds pin IO to this flight controller. So in this case, it replaces UART6 with two pin IO interfaces. So on TX, we have uh, pin IO user one 
and on RX we have pin IO user 2. So what I'm going to do is hook up the ground 5 volts and TX which is user 1 because they're in a row it'd be easier for me to just plug it in. But um, you can use the RX pin to operate a completely different pin IO device. So that's how we're going to be setting this up. So just to reiterate, if your device supports pin IO, check your flight controller. If that doesn't support it or the pins are used up, then check the iNav GitHub. Now, just to prove a point, there is a pin IO firmware for the Matec F722WPX. So if we look at the F722WPX, you'll see if we go down to the layout that it already has pin IO, but user one is used to switch the camera on and off and user two is used to switch between the two cameras. So even though it has pin IO, you can't actually use it to do things like operate this thing. So on this target with the pin IO option, it replaces UART 5 with pin IO 3 and 4. So you can actually still use pin IO on that flight controller. And in that case, again, we lose a UART, but there's four others. That's not too bad to be quite fair. So let's get this thing set up. So the first thing that we need to do, if our flight controller doesn't support pin IO, or we need to get access to more pin IO pins by changing a UART, we need to flash the right firmware. So all I've done is plugged in the flight controller via USB. And if we're using the same version of iNav on the same exact flight controller, the update is actually going to be pretty simple. So long as we're not using anything on the UART that we want. So I'm going to go in ports first and make sure that there's nothing on UART 6, which everything's fine on here if there was we'd just have to move it somewhere else but seeing as we're not using it all i'm going to do is go into the cli and do a diff all i'm going to copy that to the clipboard and now i'm just going to flash the updated firmware so we'll pop in the firmware flasher now where i'm using a release candidate i do need to turn on show unstable releases and you'll notice that the target has detected what's already on that flight controller, but we do need, in this case, to use an alternate target. So I'm gonna choose the F405SE pin IO and make sure full chip arrays is on. Oh yeah, I need to choose a version. So I'm gonna choose the, the latest version. So if you're not using release candidates, this would always be the latest stable version. And we're gonna choose load, <laughs> load firmware online because this is going to be the same version that we've already got on the flight controller, we don't need to worry about the release notes. But if you are doing an update, of course, remember to treat it as a new update and read the release notes, see what's changed and what process you should really be going through to do the update. But now we're just going to flash the firmware. So once this is done, we'll come back and continue this process. All right, there we go. Our flash has completed. So I'm just going to connect to the flight controller. And again, because we are doing a straight update of the same flight controller, same firmware, everything, I'm just going to choose keep current settings and go straight into the CLI. And I'm going to paste in our diff code and hit enter so that that can re-put everything back onto the flight controller that was there five minutes ago. Once again, that when this is finished, I'll come back and we can continue. Okay, we're rebooting after doing the flash. And to be honest, there's not really a lot we need to do with this at the moment. But just to show you the difference, if I pop into the modes tab now, turn off the unused modes. Uh, if I'd shown you this beforehand, there would not have been any user modes on here at all. But now, we have our pin IO, we have user one and user two. So let's go and set up the flight controller now. Okay, so this is gonna be pretty simple. Now the reason I've put it on uh, user one is because T6, TX6 is right next to the five volt and ground. So we have our ground to ground, five volt to five volt, and this is our pin IO signal which is going to our TX6 pin on in this case. But of course, if it had a pin IO uh, pin already, then that's all you need to use. 
But what I'm going to do is put the peanut here so we can see what's going on. I just need to plug my receiver on so we can operate it and then we'll come back. Right, so my receiver is all hooked up. We can see on the receiver page, everything is working. One thing we need to do at a basic level is set up a switch so that we can activate the pin IO. So what I'm gonna do quickly is just add a switch. So let me create a new mix. And I really can't be able to put anything in. So I'm just gonna set the source and I'm gonna use this momentary switch on the top. And let's find an empty channel. There we go, channel nine. So let's see that's operating there. And in iNav channel nine is operating. So now all we need to do is go into the modes page and we're gonna go down to our user one and add a range for um, when we want it to operate. So we'll click add range and I'm going to choose auto because I'm using I have six and I'm just going to press the, the button. So you can see it's automatically selected channel nine. Now I only want it to work when I hold the switch down. So we just need to drag that range over here and you can see it operating. So if we save that, that's all we need to do in iNav. So let's check it out. Right, so here we have our peanut, which is connected through this wire to our uh, pin IO power and ground. This here is just the receiver, so don't worry about that. Obviously our USB to iNav, and I've plugged in a battery because of course this is running off of five volts, which we need to get through our BEC. So let me power that on, and you can see our peanut has started charging. Right, so now all I'm gonna do is press this momentary switch, and it's gonna be a short press to turn it on which there you go, we're now, we're now on. And now we need a slightly longer press to start recording. So there we go, oh, that's turned it off. But yeah, if I turn it back on, longer press, it should start recording. There we go, now we're recording. Again, longer press and it will stop recording. Short press and it will power it off. There you go, so that's, that's all you need to do to get this working. What I will do is put a link somewhere with some setup so that you can actually do this with special functions or that sort of thing in OpenTX and in EFOS. What I will do is set up a free position switch. So if you move it backwards, it will turn the peanut on or off. And if you move it forwards, it will stop or start recording. So I set up a page on my website with the instructions for that, but I'll put a link in the video description. Okay, so look, a quick demonstration of this working. I've moved it onto this switch here. So if I just switch it backwards, you'll see user one just flashed on and that's turned on. If I put it back to the middle, if I put it backwards again, it will turn it off. So let's turn it on and I'll switch it the other way this time, so towards me, there we go. So it does work, and I'll put this on the website, but I just wanted to give you a little demo of it working, and I'll show you how to do it on OpenText as well. But anyway, I hope this video was useful, and if you enjoyed it and found it helpful, please remember to give it a thumbs up, click that subscribe and bell icon, that will help get this video out to more people so they can learn how to do this too, and there's a chance that there'll be other things on my channel you find interesting too, so, don't forget to check those out. And of course, share this if people have a question. So this is how to get PinIO working with iNav. Fly models like you stole them. See you on the next one.